Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Main Character Syndrome. I'm your host, Cheesy Manfredo, aka Alfredo Morales, and this is hopefully going to be your next favorite podcast. And hopefully, these next two guys that are right here are going to be your next favorite internet characters of the day. I'm with with me here is a uh, Cash Cash and Kazoo. And wait, before they introduce themselves, I'd like to say thank you to Tectonic Improv and King Protus. Oh my god, I can't believe I forgot his fucking name. I King know Protus. Those guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm close friends with King Protus. I forgot his fucking name. Yeah, like yeah. an asshole. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, yep. So thank you to Tectonic Improv and King Protus for being on the previous episode. But enough about them. Let's talk about you guys. What a uh, What's up, what's up, gamers? What do you yeah. guys do? Hey. You want to oh. go first? Oh, okay. Whoever wants to go yeah. first, go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll go first. Uh, my name is Cash, uh, or Adam, uh, 23, day them. Uh, I'm a New York artist. I'm a podcaster myself. Um, I also do YouTube, where I mainly talk about cartoons, but this year I'm trying to talk about, like, a bunch of other stuff. Um... Yeah. I, I basically just have, like, a lot of, like, interest and stuff. I really dig, like, urban Y2K aesthetics and stuff. Really big into, uh, you know, animation, tokusatsu, stuff like that. Like, old oh, school hip-hop yeah. culture. No, and I'm currently just trying to get, like, my own original story off the ground and just, like, really have something that combines all those interests into one. But in the meantime, I'm just uh, working my portfolio, trying to make an industry. Nothing too special, but, no, I'm just chilling. Fuck yeah, Ryan and Grind, bro. All right, hi, it's me, Kazoo Chichu, or Kazoo, or Riley, or what the fuck ever. <laughs> I'm like a filthy little, like, scrimbler. I wake up every morning with, like, a loud screech, and then I uh, uh, sketch a bit. I'm, I'm an artist. I mean, it's it's not very obvious, but I do art. Hoping yeah, I can get comms going. <laughs> kazoo, kazoo does art. I have to pull out the whip. And make him go to the station. Yeah, and I have like a secret project that. Oh yeah, like, we, well we can talk about it. Like, yeah, we can talk about it a little. Because the thing, cool. the thing, the thing about being a, a Z-list niche internet celeb is that you could talk about your secret project that people will forget about them unless they it's, don't. Yeah, it's true. It's true. <laughs> yeah, I think know. people just get like a high off of seeing a secret project. They get, it's a little bit of the main character syndrome in them, you know. Oh yeah, true. Yeah. True. Exactly. Uh-huh. Um, but wait, let me let's talk about uh, our secret project for just a second before yeah, go we go into main character syndrome. Yeah. But me and Kazoo are working on. We're gonna make a, a monster manual for a video game that doesn't exist. Yeah, you Ooh. fuckers, you like Pokemon, you like Dragon Quest, it's mostly Dragon Quest. Yeah, you like Shin Megami Tensai. <laughs> yeah, uh, we have a Discord server where we just pump out ideas and we go yeah. back and forth, you know, like, like how's this Scrimblow? And it's like, okay, yeah. well, maybe if we give them this. Sometimes mm. we just come up with, like, names and then we just, the other person just designs the character based on the name. That's pretty much my process. I feel like it's, like, the most backwards process ever is just, like, Walking around thinking of like names and then coming up with the design. I should dump more names into the into the server. Oh, I got it too. Yeah. I've I've had like a few ones that I've been like ruminating on ruminating on for like days now. Like, tell you, uh, let me hear you your opinion on this. All right, okay. Ka- cappuccino. So it's like a kappa, but instead of like water, <laughs> it's, like coffee. Guy, it's like coffee. Yeah, yeah. It's like an energetic kappa. Energetic kappa. He's like a fucking fiend. You know. He. And Maybe. you know what else would be cool? You know, a picture, you know how, like, latte art is, like, the big thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, like, all of them would have, like, different little, like, latte arts in their head and shit. That's, when, when you said ca- cappuccino, I, I pictured kind of, like, a little coffee machine on top of, like, a kappa kind of thing. Like, he's mm. a barista worker, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I think this could work. I think you, you better write down these genius ideas. Oh, I do, some... I do. Believe <laughs> yeah, me, yeah. I do. <laughs> to, these 10 out of 10 ideas no one's ever thought of these <laughs> i'm telling you folks nobody's ever thought about cappuccino <laughs> <laughs> the cappuccino but anyway yeah. let's talk about uh main character syndrome and right, yeah. in the previous episode we we read a description of it and it was too long but i'll just tell you it's basically just someone who thinks they're like the the, the hero of their story the pro tag and i i think i have a big main character syndrome problem how do you guys feel about main character syndrome do you think you're the main character or are you the side character of your story i think the beauty of being an american is that you think you're the most important person 
on planet Earth. So yeah, I totally have main character syndrome. That's like, fucking true. Oh my yeah. God. I'm, a, I'm such a funny little guy. Like I, I just say stuff like inoffensively, and people get mad. And you know, that's like <laughs> such a main character like type of thing. Like if you're not like actively like aggravating the people around you, like you're just you're blending into the background. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You gotta stand out. <laughs> You got to stand out, guys. All yeah. right, Cash, what about you? Um, it's definitely an interesting question. I think I'm more like... I've, I feel like I see myself as a main character at times, so but I feel like up until like, like last year, I feel like most people just saw me as a side character, just someone who like lived <laughs> into the background. So I'm trying to like put myself out there more, you know, and you no, know, there's snags along the way. But, you know, I want to like be seen so you know like hey <laughs> is, is, is it is it because a lot of people go up to you and they're like oh yeah you were on a, a tuna 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 Rific's video you were you were like in that yeah yeah you, you, you get that vibe from that like <laughs> yeah honestly like i felt that for a while you know it's why i try to like take not only like making videos and making art seriously because i felt like for a while um, and, like, no shade, you know, to Tariq or, like, anyone else, but it's, like, mm-hmm. I felt like the only real identity I had or the only reason that people knew who I was was because I was on other bigger people's projects. So that's why I was, like, really hammering to, like, focus on my art, do, like, my own big projects and, like, getting, like, you know, my friends you know, involved in stuff. And, you know, I don't really have, like, the views, but mm-hmm. I know that the people who are watching me follow me now or people like actually like me for me and i like that if it it, it makes it feel any better i think i found out about you not through uh tariq but i think uh i think i saw you as like a regular that asterios coconuts would talk to yeah i'm like okay and you follow me and i'm like okay so this guy must be not crazy (laughs) right (laughs) because there's some there's some crazy like uh stereos could be a crazy magnet sometimes and i'm like okay this person seem sane right doesn't yeah. seem like a psycho <laughs> anybody in comparison right i have right. the most yeah, soy ba- i have the most like soy take imaginable on this <laughs> so imagine like imagine like any collaboration is basically like marvel's the avengers or justice league or whatever mm-hmm. you're one character in this story and you're all colliding and then like one of them is like gets more focused than anybody else but they all have their own separate books and you know people are fans of those books and they you're like the, <laughs> you're, you're like the, you're like the wasp in um in, in, in avengers endgame <laughs> <laughs> you remember oh. the wasp she was in that movie <laughs> oh god but um no. yeah i i think um yeah i think um i want to say this earlier i think mostly artists kind of get like main character syndrome oh yeah. you have right? to Just, you have to believe in your own bullshit if you ever want to make art you know? true. <laughs> no 100 percent true i think and mostly the artists who kind of have like an original project going on for them um because i know there is like um this, this might sound derogatory but kind of like the the cogs in the machine artists kind of people yeah, you know yeah. the people who like who stay as like in betweeners for like their whole career and yeah. they um yeah. were they were on several like not that like celebrated films but they were just it was just a job you know the rank and files you know that's yeah yeah you know nothing against those guys because like if that's all you just want to do and that pays the bills most of these guys have families so like they think of that first right it makes total sense too because it's like like a a brand new idea is ambitious you have to explain it to somebody if you're like in an artist alley and you just come across the rank and file guys who just draw like uh you know like fucking deku from my hero academia and like ink style or whatever you know people want that or whatever you know people see a premise they already know and understand it and it's like okay that's all right and they fall in line and buy it that that actually reminds me i actually um was at a convention this past weekend it was a rocket con here in san diego yeah and and when i first um got there i realized that this is a this was first and foremost a toy convention so there are a lot of people there that weren't interested in buying comics and i'm pretty sure i was the only independent no actually i was one one of two of the only people selling like an independent comic because there was like a guy like two boosts down from me 
and um, I didn't know exactly what comic he was selling, but he um, he was dropping his like log line. He was dropping his like elevator pitch for every person who came by his booth, <laughs> right? And I overheard it, and he was saying like, "Oh yeah, in, in this in this uh, story, no one dies. Everyone's like immortal." And I'm like, "All right." And then he's all like, "And there's also no heroes." And I'm like, "Wait a second, wait a second. This sounds kind of familiar. <laughs> yeah, this sounds a little familiar." <laughs> this is this is the key point to main character theory being real. This is like your tournament arc, essentially. Like yeah. you're unique <laughs> from everybody else, but there's this one other guy who's just like you. But like <laughs> shitty in some way. Yep. Yeah, this is your mental battlefield with him. Yeah. So at oh, first man. I thought he was like, did he? Did he just was selling this guy on villain verse? But no. He then he said something else, and I'm like, okay, never mind. This isn't villain verse. And it was yeah. um this guy who was selling his book called Immortal Era, and it's basically about like like people are immortal now, but they're not like it's not like a super kind of immortality. It's more like if you like lose an arm, that's it. It doesn't grow back. And um, yeah. you can't go hung. You could get hungry, but you can't die from going hungry. You can't like right. starve to death. You'll just forever be hungry. Oh damn! And and if you get your head chopped off, your head is like still alive. Goof. And it's <laughs> yeah, it's all these like weird. And you can still get sick. And I asked him like, how do you like? What happens if you have like cancer? And mm. and he's all like, oh, you just have cancer forever. And yeah. it's like, oh man, <laughs> you that just doesn't sound fun at all. <laughs> aches and cramps for the rest of your fucking life. Uh, yeah, that sounds uh, terrible. So the whole cancer. premise is that the main characters are trying to like abolish immortality. There, there's some sort of weird spell or something. There's just some sort of weird thing of the Bob that's making everyone like immortal, and the main yeah. characters are trying to destroy it or whatnot. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so me and him were one of the few people selling, like, an independent comic, and it's, uh, it's, it's tough. Cause, it really um, is. <laughs> yeah, because, oh my god, you have to, like, sell it so much to people. Like, every person who came by my booth, I, I gave them, like, the, the, the spiel of, like, what Villain Verse is. Oh, in case, um, anyone is new to the podcast, I do a comic called Villain Verse, and it's this, it's an indie comic I'm pushing really hard yeah. to, like, make sure I get as many eyes as possible on it. I even destroyed my my Twitter credentials to make it grow. Um, <laughs> boy, boy, that was a gamble. <laughs> Am I right, gamers? Oh yeah, yeah. That tweet made the rounds. I'll tell you that much. That, that, he was the that main tweet, character that day. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I'm. You know what? Kind of like at first, I wasn't too worried about like um, the tweet I'm talking about is the big Twitter artist yeah. tweet. If anyone, if anyone uh, knows that, oh, and, I'm definitely and if, familiar. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And um, if you. Back, um, like maybe like two months ago, if you looked up Cheesy Manfredo on Google on Google Images, you would find no evidence of big Twitter artist. But up until recently, if you look it up, you get like just a lot of big Twitter artist comics, and I was like, ah, oh, damn. <laughs> um, at first, I thought I was bulletproof, but I'm slightly tainted with that now. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit, a little, a little bit. But uh, I got I got faith. It'll, um, it'll, it'll, it'll bounce back. I mean, it's like. It's look if you disagree with the big Twitter artist uh, comic, you the viewer, I want you to like reflect to yourself. Would a main character help out a homie? Would a main <laughs> character help out a homie? You no. need to um, if you didn't like big Twitter artist comic, please write down why in the in the comments. I yeah, won't please, read it. Oh, <laughs> please <laughs> write an essay. Write like a fucking five page essay of why. A beautiful sea of like shit stirring in there. Please, please. Oh, fuck yeah. Shit stirring. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Oh fuck. Jesus Christ. Have, and it, have, um, but anyway, have do you guys um you guys ever sold at a at a booth before, like at a convention? Nah, never. <laughs> Not yet. Really? Yeah, my art. Uh, I don't know. I personally don't feel like my art is like at that level yet, but I would want to. Yeah, I am. It's it's not going into it. There's like a couple of things that should have felt very obvious, like yeah. stuff like um oh people want like fan art of the characters they already like, you know. Yeah. And yeah. And um, as kind of like a last minute thing, I did to make sure I I would at least like break even on my booth was um, I was selling like a quick little like commissions in my sketch book yeah. like uh 25 buck commissions you know and that did pretty well oh there was this one guy this this yeah yeah tell this this, story. this older gentleman uh, i don't know if i told you this story i have like a lot of stories but um a couple of them i don't think i could say 
because mm. that it might get me in trouble. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> <I'll> say, bad. <laughs> I, I can say stuff like that, like in private servers, which yeah. the audience will never hear ever. But oh, yeah, <laughs> there was this one older guy, like uh-huh. he looked like maybe like he was in his sixties, maybe he was like all like white hair, uh, balding, uh, very Rubenes gentleman, if you will. Mm-hmm. And he comes up to me and he sees my commissions. And he he pulls out like a he he has he had like a printout picture of a model in a Japanese schoolgirl uniform like tied up <laughs> no. like be, like be, like, like it, it was like she was caught in some sort of like a rope it's like trap. the shibari the shibari yes. style stuff yes yeah. yes exactly and um this this picture was like clearly printed but also it was like in a like plastic covering right. <laughs> And he, he gave it to me, oh. and he's all like, hey, can you, like, uh, draw her, but as a mermaid? And I'm like, um, okay. So, and it was, it was pretty easy, because all you have to do is just not draw her legs and just replace it with, like, a fishtail. Yeah. The annoying part is drawing, like, the rope. Like, oh, my God. Drawing, like, yeah. the rope the rope fetish shit is just too... Yeah. Uh, it, it's so intricate, oh, and it's annoying. Oh, you specified that you still had to, like, do the rope? It can just be like yeah. He wanted he place. wanted the rope. He oh. well because it, it's like the it's like a mermaid schoolgirl trapped mm. in a in a fishnet, right? Like I guess that's yeah. what he was implying with me doing this, right? Oh, you God. would think and, it would be an actual fishnet, not a shibari style thing, right? But, yeah, you would think. Right. I oh, God, I wish I took a photo of it. I could have like shared it around. But <laughs> his name was Nolan uh, B. Jed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, this was a this was a girl like Nolan's gay, so it wouldn't work. That's true. That's true. But uh, that that being said, um, he um he waited for like an hour because I I get crank these out pretty quick, like maybe under two hours. Yeah. Oh, and he's, right. and after that, he told me that like you know what, I'll just pick it up tomorrow, and I'm like, all right. Mm. So I just finished it and was holding it for him till tomorrow. And then later, I find out I realize I look at the other booths where people are like also doing commissions, and I see that this guy has spoken to everyone there and has has commissioned all of them and i overhear it too like they all commissioned him like to do mermaids like a bunch of other artists too i guess this thing it really is just mermaids he's just really into mermaids right you and, gotta um, imagine he just has like a wall full of this shit <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, oh god shit. I, I hope <laughs> that guy like i hope that guy like dies and um <laughs> we but we don't know till like weeks later and the cops show up and there's just like a wall of mermaid art just covering it you know like in the movies where like there's newspaper covering the window and like on the wall but instead it's just like a lot of commissions of like mermaid like girls all tied up uh, oh god yeah. that'd be epic that'd be that'd be aesthetically pleasing but mm-hmm. <laughs> i i find out that my booth neighbors also did the mermaid because um she asked me like oh did the guy ask you about the mermaid i'm like yeah so mm-hmm. the guy shows up the next day i show him the mermaid i'm like here you go and he's all like oh, okay good thanks and then he just leaves right mm-hmm. and then he goes to the all the other booths to pick up his commission and but what i notice is that after he picks up like their commission his commission he starts talking to them for a minute and i could overhear them and it kind of sounds like he's giving them like like critiques mm, he's like nagging them mm. like, oh, like there's know. maybe maybe there's certain things they didn't do in their commission mm. that i did or maybe like maybe he's just complimenting them maybe i'm just maybe i'm just trying to think that i'm special or something but well, this is it, main it, character syndrome this is main character syndrome right here yeah, yeah but but all i know is that when i gave him his photo he sounded pleased and he went to the other ones and it seemed like he's Maybe I'm just antisocial. Maybe that could be it. Maybe the, <laughs> maybe all the other commissioners like were started talking to them like, "Oh, you're really into mermaids?" Like, personally, yeah. I could. I don't. I'm not interested in the lives of anyone who like, like commissions me. I, I mm. really do not care about uh, commissioners. Mm. That sounds that sounds kind of cold. Like, I just kind of <laughs> want their. I just kind of want their money. I mean, I don't know. We. I feel like it's, like. Let's say you work at like a fast food place. Do you really care about like every single customer's like live that comes in? You want to like hear their life story or that's not me. I just, I'm yeah. kind of an asshole. I'm kind of like monotone at like yeah, back yeah, when I used yeah. to work at like a cash register. I would just not. I mean, it's like, like a it's a job anybody. at the end of the day. You know, it's yeah. like I I am here to do my one specific job and nothing else. Like like I'm sorry, like your day has been bad or whatever, but like I'm not like. A therapist or whatever dude i work at the fucking in and out man like get your <laughs> fucking burger and get out dude. true true and um this guy like 
uh, what, what was I gonna say? I, um, yeah, like before you commissioned me, I, I made sure to show him like, hey, by the way, this is how I kind of generally draw girls, right? So I drew, I showed him a couple photos from my sketchbook, mm. a couple pictures of my sketchbook, just so he gets an idea of like, this is what, how I usually draw girls. So he's not surprised when he gets the commission. He's like, oh yeah, no, it looks fine. Mm. And um, like I, I don't know, like maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I could actually just ask because I, I am, I am in the, I do have the DMs for both of the booths that he Ooh. like um, was just talking to with. Yeah, so you, I could have just asked like, hey, I noticed you you spoke to him like after the commission. Did what was what was that about, <laughs> right? Or or, or or maybe they'll just maybe they'll be like, oh, I don't know. Maybe they forgot. But yeah, they'll they'll probably just forget. This is like a Larry David scenario. It's like that guy when he uh, when he asked you a question. <laughs> Did he? Uh, did he? Did he say anything about the drawing? Did, did he say anything about me specifically? <laughs> did he say anything about the person? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, but that's uh, that was like my past weekend. And um, how's how's your guys? How's your guys' week? You guys um, uh, anything fun? Uh, hmm. Let's what's see the here. day? What's the day in the life of a main character? <laughs> of a main character, I get up. I uh, I run with the dogs on the beach. Uh, <laughs> I power lift for a bit, you know. You have one dog. I don't, don't even you? have any dogs, actually. I thought you had a dog. No. <laughs> well, who the fuck am I thinking of? Who has a dog? A lot of people with dogs. Oh, de- all right. Well, <laughs> well, that mystery of the dog has been solved. <laughs> the mystery of the dog. All right, Cash. How's how's your week going? How how are you doing? Um, generally, I've been doing all right. Um, the, I think like a day and a half ago, I had like really bad insomnia where I just got like no sleep that night. But for some reason, that day was like my most productive because I was able to like, uh, learn some PA stuff. I was getting started on revamping my character stuff and I finished editing a music video. But by the time I actually was like, Getting ready to go to bed. I just face planted my shit like right into bed. I couldn't. I couldn't survive. Damn. Uh, that, that reminds me like back in earlier during the pandemic. Um, yeah. I would fight really hard to have a good sleep schedule, but I eventually lost that fight. And um, I would do like there'd be sometimes a couple of days throughout the week where I would like try to reset my sleep schedule. Well, where I, where I would try to stay awake for like the whole night. Right. Wow. Yeah. yeah it doesn't work. It doesn't well, end up working. It, it, I think it worked for me. I mean, it's probably not healthy in the long run to do that. Mm. But um, I can definitely times... like stay up all night. I just know that that by like uh, sometime the next day I'm gonna like fall asleep in like the middle of the day or something. I yeah. um, I noticed that I actually currently uh, recently am more like sleepy enough to go to bed. Before like I found it kind of hard to go to bed. Yeah. But um, as of like recently, I've been doing a pretty good job of just like being tired before going to bed, and I think it has to do with the fact that I recently like stopped drinking coffee because uh-huh. um, coffee was like really fucking me up. Like I I noticed that I every time I would drink coffee, I would have these terrible coughs, like every time. And at mm. first, I didn't like connect the dots, but then I realized, wait, this always happens every time. Wait I a minute, coffee. 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 <laughs> it was right there in front of me the whole time. <laughs> wow. But if you but, just woke up one day and it's like, yeah, it was, the whole point of coffee was to get you to cough out all your uh, ailments and stuff. It was never about uh, keeping you up. I wish it was that easy. I wish mm-hmm. like, I wish you could just cough out like a disease out of your body. That would be like, so sick. You know, like that like medieval shit where they had like the four humors and shit. Oh yeah. yeah, like um, yeah. like was it like bloodletting or something? Bloodletting, phlegm, uh, phlegm. What the fuck else? Someone should there? make like an anime like power system based out of like the, the four humors. <laughs> yeah, the four humors. Okay. I can see it. I can see it happen. I I can see like someone like yeah, this is my medieval anime where people are like powered by phlegm, which is like what boogers. It's like fucking like, uh, <laughs> but it could work. I could see it. I can visualize it in my head. Yeah, I um, can see it. You know, before I go, um, there was this uh, one guy I wanted to talk about, but yeah. uh, before I go into that, uh-huh. uh huh. Do you is there anything else you guys wanna wanna talk about before I get into this next section about um? Wait, let me. I forgot this guy's name, but um, 
Well, I look up this guy's name. If there's anything you guys want to bring up, now's your chance. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Hmm. Okay, so I guess that's a yes for my thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, tell, tell, all right. So tell me if this name sounds familiar. Do you guys know a uh, Yukio Mishima? No. Mm. I, no, it sounds know? familiar. It sounds sounds familiar. familiar. Okay, so I'm just I'm reading this off of uh, Wikipedia, but um, I'll go more into detail about who he is specifically. But he was a he was a Japanese like author, right? Yeah. And he was like a he was potentially like the most well known Japanese author, like during what would, what would have been um, the rise of like Imperial Japan to post World War II, right? So this was like his era. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you know what? Yeah, he's like contemporaries, contemporaries with like Osamu Daisai and shit like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he uh, and he kind of did it all. He had like a foot in everything. Anything like scripts, poems. Uh, I think even Kabuki theater up to film. Mm-hmm. This guy was like a part of right. Um, so I found out about this guy because I was on YouTube and I got recommended like Yukio Mishima's opinion on the Japanese. And I was like this, and it was just a couple seconds long. And I was like hmm that sounds kind of interesting so i clicked on it having uh-huh. no idea who this guy was and he was talking about how um he said that japan has this would and this would be post-world war ii so uh-huh. he was saying that japan has lost their identity right they have given up their masculinity in favor of of femininity to appeal to westerners <laughs> and i'm like wait a second this guy sounds real familiar this guy uh-huh. sounds like a lot of people who exist today <laughs> right and in my head i'm like this guy has to be like a right winger right so when i look yeah. on wikipedia it's like yeah he's a right wing he's a nationalist like right wing like writer right uh, although but it's right. but w- what makes it so interesting is that he he attempted a coup on on the japanese government oh yeah that like no. those were like everywhere in like the 50s and like 60s and shit mostly by like left not by leftists but like I, he I, it said he he said he did not like the indoctrination of the new left um yeah. A hundred percent bet that they weren't exactly like new leftists. They were probably just more liberals from like yeah, yeah, America right. Reconstruction era, right? Totally, yeah. Right, but like to a right winger, of course, like anything, anything. like left. Of you gotta, center. you gotta imagine this dude's like conditions of what was it, nineteen twenty five? Like they're like coming out of like the Meiji Restoration. And they still have like that like uh, Bushido code of like. Yeah, like we can just do what the fuck we want. Oh, that's whenever. so. That's so. That's so interesting because, like, reading up about his childhood, like he he had a very kind of like interesting, like the his childhood, like everything in his life, kind of was reflected, like in his work and what he did. Yeah, and it seemed like at a young age, his dad, like, he wanted to be a writer. I think when he was a kid, yeah. but his dad would like grab his writings and rip it up, and he was like said like writing is like gay shit, son. You got to be masculine and join the military right yeah and he he didn't end up joining the military he still pursued a career in writing but, <laughs> oh my god that's literally like every like uh fucking <laughs> right-wing hack today it's all like yeah i could have been in like the army but like uh you i, know, I could have been in the military but instead I, I decided to become a failed comedian <laughs> <laughs> right the, the difference is that from what i hear is that yukio was like was a really good writer he was also very fluent in english like there's straight up like interviews mm. where he's just speaking like perfect english wow. and he was also fluent in german which would make sense during that yeah. time oh. right yeah <laughs> right lines. but um it it seemed like he 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 kind of did this thing that like he I, I think he basically created like the Sigma male equivalent of, of like well, <laughs> like a Bushido. So basically, like um, he 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 created a like kind of a form of belief that was kind of like so Bushido is like what like living by the sword, right? Yeah. Um. So he created living by the sword and the pen, right? So he's like, no, no, writing isn't gay and feminine it's yeah. it's pretty badass right it's actually cool to like insult people it's like the best thing he like walks into like a soy sauce distillery and he's like what's <laughs> happening you fucking soy boys <laughs> <laughs> oh that'd be everywhere you would yeah. <laughs> his, his diet would have been wait a second <laughs> wait a second hold up he's a soy boy too because <laughs> but, um, but, but what i'm saying with the whole thing with like the sigma male is kind of like 
these attributes that would have been seen like not masculine are suddenly now masculine because we decided they are now you know like oh no it's actually pretty cool to to be like a shut-in and like not be into women you know that's totally masculine as well right that's main character syndrome for you that's main character syndrome for for (laughs) you right there right and also another fun fact is that um i i don't know how much evidence there is towards this but it seemed like a lot of his friends and like his wife too um said that he was gay (laughs) (laughs) he he was he was gay and like and i found out about this because i like i saw that he was honored like on like in san francisco i think they have like a rainbow walk and he was like honored in it oh my fucking god (laughs) yeah which is like kind of like like huh like i I don't know exactly like how because someone could be like you know someone could have these very like hardcore like beliefs but you might not be able to really see it in their writing because i have not read any of his books right yeah 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 Yeah. but but like it's just so it feels kind of like oh we need some asian representation for like our rainbow walk you know so we gotta we gotta add this guy (laughs) san francisco has like such like a fucking rich like asian history and they have to like pick like a fucking like i Imperialist, like, come on. <laughs> there has yeah, to like, be like at least this, like five local hero Asian this, guys. That this, can this yeah, this guy is, is very much like you know, like oh, we gotta put the emperor back into power type type B, you know. And yeah, it's like, yeah. like come on now. He um he also there's like I was in the middle of watching a documentary about him, and it was super interesting because mm-hmm. they were talking about how like he had like all these like hang ups, like he hated the idea of becoming older. Like, he didn't want to be old and ugly. That was, like, his main thing, right? He's such a little diva. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> but and, but the thing is that what's interesting about his coup attempt, which is pretty infamous, no. is that, like, they I think they were holding someone hostage. And they and this was during, I think, the new constitution that the Americans wrote for the Japanese. And this would have been the start of the 1970s right. when this constitution was going to be in place. Um, he he and like four other guys of his special little group, basically like their little Japanese proud boy group that he formed. Yeah. Um, oh. They they like attempted a coup where they kidnapped this guy and they said that like uh, Japan needs to go back to its glory. We need to like go back and honor the emperor and honor Bushido and all this stuff, right? And yeah. then and there is a footage of of him on top of like a government building saying all this stuff to the people out in front. Oh, um, fuck yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> Jeez. Um. The, the um, thing too that's interesting is this group wasn't incredibly popular. I don't think they had a massive amount of numbers like uh, like how you see the Proud Boys today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but that being said, after he said all this stuff on the roof, he went inside and he committed Hari Kiri. Right. Mm-hmm. One of his um one of his like second in command was the one who like cut off his head. And um, people mm-hmm. have talked about how there there could be kind of like a gay angle to this, right? Because it's like he was like his whole group was made up of like pretty boys, right? Like I guess people that would have been his type. Oh my right. god, his fucking fanboy army. <laughs> yeah, his fanboy <laughs> army. He, yeah. he had it ready to go. And it's, it's funny because he's all, he was also married and had two kids too. But yeah. that wasn't like uncommon for like gay men back in the day to like be married and have kids, you know? Yeah, it's the thing you keep. It's your gumar. It's the thing you keep on your side, so, you know? So, so really, he's like a bisexual icon if you think about it. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. But this guy, um, super, super interesting. Um,. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't really want to meet any of his fans today. I would not I be just, seen with him in a not, public place. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, uh, but yeah, you were saying that there was apparently a bunch of other like coup attempts during this. Oh time yeah, too, yeah. There's, there's other crazy stuff. Like if you've heard of like the Japanese like Red Army, that's like another thing that happened in like the 70s, where like a bunch of like guys. I think a lot of them are like members of like a band like try to like hijack a plane to like get into like north korea because that's where they saw fit to where true communism is or whatever so these guys were like yeah these guys were commies (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) that's that's so that's so that's so fucking interesting i i heard about the whole like um stealing like the airplane and trying to go to north korea bit yeah um it's crazy oh another like interesting thing about yukio mishima was that he apparently was do, do you remember the the piece of text they would have like uh like kamikaze bombers like read before like they would like yeah. go on the fucking suicide flights yeah, yeah um apparently he was a big fan of that and he would read it to himself all the time right uh, he's such a this is like the most like perfect thing for like to represent like every like conservative person 
Like they just like love the LARP so much. They True, want to yeah. be victimized so much. They, he he that, was also like unir- like if this guy was alive today, he would unironically be on the Joe Rogan podcast. If Joe oh, Rogan's yeah, podcast absolutely. was like if Joe Rogan had the power to time travel and interview like people all across history. Yeah. Um, number one, Hitler, of course, but number two would be this guy. Yeah. <laughs> this guy stands tall among everybody who's ever said, like, oh, yeah, you know, I look, like, small or whatever, but I could, like, kick your ass, man. Like, Yo, This guy was, like, on that whole thing where it's, like, I need to be more masculine, so he would work out and get, like, buffer, right? Yeah, like, that was, yeah, like, yeah. his whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. But, yeah. yeah, this guy seemed super, super, super interesting. Um, my favorite type of right-wingers are all the ones that are in the past and dead. Yeah, that's uh, true. because in retrospect, we could kind of like analyze their whole life and see like this this story this, this story unfold. They, they become a main character in death, yeah. you know. And right. it's easier to make fun of them if they can't say anything back. That's that's, yeah. that's true. Yeah. That's that's definitely true. Yeah. All right, all righty, gentlemen. Let's um. Okay, so I think we're getting close to the end. Yeah, oh, it's like a... Wait, hold on. Let me see how long have we been. Okay, yeah, we've been talking for a decent amount. Yeah, but um, but I want you guys to tell me. Mm-hmm. Um, th- th- this is a segment we do at the end, and I want you guys to tell me what. Uh, tell, give me your, give me your, um, give me your, your person. So this is what this is what the segment's gonna be. Mm-hmm. Um, who do you think deserves to get canceled this week? You gotta pick one person to cancel this week, right? <laughs> and and I'm gonna I'll go first just to I'll go first to just you know set the, the ground works but i i think the people who need to get canceled this week are the guys who are trying to push podcast as being like intellectual media like uh, like people who are hmm. trying to push like podcast as being at the same level of like reading a book <laughs> right oh my god you, fucking, you guys know what i'm talking about fucking podcasts in schools or whatever could you just imagine just like sitting down at like and listen to oh god i would hate (laughs) all right like no are you guys really listening are you listening to what he's saying (laughs) you go into like mrs johnson's class and she plays like she plays her like true crime podcast (laughs) which Uh, actually you know what everyone a hundred percent bet i bet there are teachers out there who play segments of podcasts for absolutely like i had like a I had in a uh, high school. I had like I was like really into like Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. So I thought, oh, forensics would be fun. I get to like learn how to do like cool shit, <laughs> even though I'm never gonna be a fucking cop or whatever. <laughs> so you like get in there, and it's just like the most like disinterested pe- uh, children around, and like all the class consists of is just like filling out sheets, and then like occasionally like watching like Bones. Well, not occasionally. It was like. Most of my class was like watching Bones, and I couldn't tell you shit about Bones now. So, <laughs> that's the <laughs> American not... education system. Well, 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 there you go. That that's the only review I need to hear about Bones. Can't remember yeah. shit after watching. I, the only, <laughs> literally the only thing I remember is like the main guy was like reading a Green Lantern comic in a bathtub. Like, okay, you fucking mark for epic. Like, get, epic. get your floppies all wet. Okay, yeah, all right. <laughs> okay, all right, but. okay, but but these guys that specifically want to cancel. Um, it, I've noticed it, ever since uh, the whole controversy with Joe Rogan recently, where people are trying to like push off his content off of Spotify, mm. um, there has been this like string of guys who have popped up saying like, "By the age of thirty, you gotta stop watching movies, you gotta stop listening <laughs> to music, and you gotta start reading books and talking about podcasts." And it's like so well, weird because it's like. Huh. <laughs> like I, what does that even mean? Like most podcasts are just like dudes like being all like, uh, "What'd you do this week, man?" You know, like yeah, unironically, <laughs> most podcasts yeah. are just like just assholes talking about movies. Oh, yeah. that by the way, me and Kazoo have a podcast called the Unofficial Toku Cast, um, yeah. where we review like old just Toku films from all over the place. Yeah, uh, highly recommend it. It's on this channel. It's sick. Yeah. Check out it's um, what's what, last what, what last one recommend? was a. Uh, Last one was um, Cutie Honey. That one's pretty good. Cutie Honey's pretty good. I like Pulgasari a whole lot. Um, our, was... I think our last, our like last three were pretty good. The yeah. King Kong one was pretty good. The um, Godzilla versus Mothra versus Godzilla. Yeah, that mm-hmm. was pretty good. Rocked. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Recommend those. But anyway, these guys are the same guys who have like the 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 Greek statue profile pictures, yeah. and they're just <laughs> like it's so. Like, because most boomer, most people who actually read books listen yeah. to podcasts, sure, but like, 
I feel like you're not gonna like. I don't think any like white woman who's listening to true crime is gonna like try to pretend. <laughs> yeah. Is gonna try to pretend that what she has is, like intellectual, you know, like yeah. oh yeah, I'm expanding my brain. No, she just likes to hear about people getting murdered. Like who it's doesn't? Enter- <laughs> it's entertainment, like anything else, and most people aren't like, like. Sure, there are, like, educational podcasts. One of my favorites is, like, Blowback or whatever. It's, like, about uh, U.S. uh, interventionalism in, like, Afghanistan and Cuba, and I think they're going to do, like, the Soviet Union in, like, the summer or whatever. Based. And, uh, (laughs) but, like, I mean, for the most part, this is just shit you, like, put on to, like, drive in your car to or, like, work on drawing or whatever the fuck you, the viewer, do. Like, it holds, like, no, like... If given the fact that like podcasts are like meant to be like kind of put on in the background, how much of it are you actually even paying attention to? You know, like that's yeah. that's so true. That is so fucking true. You're not you're not like retaining any of it. It's just like it's just a little bit of like warm breath in your ear, so you don't feel the cold sting of loneliness. You know, <laughs> oh, imagine man. like um imagine like a couple of like forty year olds like gathered together in a little book club and they're all like yeah. okay we're done talking about our books now we, we now we talk about like yeah. the podcasts we've been watching and they're all they're all talking <laughs> about the pizza party podcast together oh my god <laughs> they, they would be like the guys who just they would be like people who don't know how to control the sound of their voice that's who I imagine listens to oh the my pizza god. party podcast oh my god. There, there was a lot of Death motherfuckers <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of motherfuckers who like um, don't know how to control the sound of their voice who were at the convention this past weekend. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, like, oh, the best yeah. type of fan. I'm, like, I'm go- Wait, yeah, go on, go on Cash. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no problem. Like, um, just like throwing my, my two cents into this, like, as someone who also does my own podcast, uh, the Cash Cast, anchored iPhone slash Cash Cast, wink, wink. Uh, but no, nah, for real. I... It really is just, like, background noise. I don't consider yeah. the stuff I make uh, to be, like, high-form, like, uh, information, entertainment, or whatever. Maybe I'm geeking a bit out because I can talk to people who work on cool stuff who I actually am a fan of. But that's whatever. In fact, this year, I want to do more uh, laid-back stuff because, like, talking to these people back-to-back yeah. way more draining than you think. But I yeah, feel like I in terms of, like, stuff that I listen to... Um. See, recently, like Spotify, I didn't even realize that they had this, but they actually have this kind of interesting feature where it's like, um, they'll play music just like in your like list, but then they also like give you like, uh, podcast episodes or like either interviews or stuff that, like goes into like, uh, I think the name was dissecting. I think that's like the only thing where it's like, I'm actually like, thinking about it because it's, uh. The, the episode I was listening to recently was, like, going to, like, Kanye's history, um, oh. like, in general, like, before it even, like, goes into, like, an, like analyzing his songs, like, beat by beat, whatever. No, that's, stuff like that. Was, yeah, that's yeah. That's so cool. Like, yes. it contextually does that for, like, every artist. Like, hey, you've listened to, like, eight hours of Kanye. How about you uh, learn a bit about him or whatever? Yeah, exactly. And the fact wow. that they're willing to, like, go into his background before actually talking yeah, they're doing, like, his whole, like, pre-My um, uh, Beautiful Dark Tunes of Fantasy, like, his yeah. life, before actually diving into the interview. So it's, like, based, like, a part retrospective. That's what I find interesting. But, like, anything else, it really is just, like, people fucking dicking around on yeah, Discord or whatever. Again, like, you you beautiful little schmucks watch, listening to this program. Like, there's I, nothing wrong with that. It's just don't, like... You're not an intellectual for listening to podcasts. Yeah, mm-hmm. sorry. That, um, no, but we love it. you. Please, please don't don't click away. <laughs> please, oh, God. Oh, no. Clark. Exactly. You're, uh, you're you're not an intellectual for listening to this podcast. Um, yeah. But you can be if you join uh, my Patreon at Cheesy Manfredo. Yeah, that's Ding. like the smartest thing to do. I mean, that's considering the like the deals, you know. Right. Exactly. You could you could read Villain Verse early when I eventually do that. Eventually. <laughs> eventually. There's like a you made like a Luna sticker too, didn't you? Oh yeah, Luna. Actually, I I have two Patreons. Yeah. God, it's so um, it's so it's so interesting having two Patreons because like because uh, then it's like how do you push both at the same time? Because I I use two different aliases for like the other one. Oh, that's. But um, I. Yeah, I have, I have a, I have a Luna sticker that's will be out by the time this podcast is up, actually. Yeah. But um, but, but before we go into that, 
Yeah. Is there? Did you guys think of anyone you guys want to cancel? Who oh, would want to cancel? Who, <laughs> who deserves to get canceled here? Because hmm. uh, if, if you guys um, if you guys don't got one, I I got another one that could like another type of person that deserves to get canceled too. Uh, I thought of mine, but I want to. Uh, <laughs> yeah, cancel Vladimir Putin. He needs to be That'll canceled. Get him. That will get them, and then that and that's the most we're gonna say about the Ukraine situation. Yeah, <laughs> please please donate to to the U, Ukraine refugees. They're gonna need it. Absolutely. Yeah. Not not don't donate don't donate to the Ukraine army. Yeah, they're backed by NATO. They're they got yeah. they got money. Don't don't yeah, worry don't about worry that. About that. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about the, the the Ukraine military. You just donate to the Ukraine people. They're gonna they're gonna need it. Yeah, definitely. The civilians need it more than anybody else. Like, yeah. Don't let anybody say like, oh wait, we're not getting into this anyway. <laughs> that, I think that's the most we should say. Yeah, as, yeah. as like uneducated as Americans, we are uneducated American plebs. At least we're yeah. not going on like Twitter and being all like, they should cancel Disney Plus for Russia <laughs> to start. <laughs> yep, yep. Putin's all like, oh boy, can't wait to ca- finally I have some free time. I can watch the rest of Book of Boba. No, wait, no, what do you mean it's not available? <laughs> oh, <laughs> no! No, put it back! No, I love Boba Fett. He's my favorite character. No! Oh my god, I have to contact my Russian congressman. What the fuck are we doing in war? I can't watch Boba Fett. He just like he starts like screaming. <laughs> you can hear like... Okay, uh, so... Okay, yeah. so Kazoo, you got... You got you got Putin right? Yeah. Uh, Cash, you, you got someone on, on the mind? I don't have a specific person, or I don't know, maybe a, like a, a type of person. Yeah, like type of person, got, like a type group of person. Of Twitter. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Animation fans. I'm, I'm oh just yeah, gonna, definitely. I'm oh, my God, yes. oh my god! Oh my god! I'm just yeah, gonna yeah. fucking say it. Yeah, yes, the fucking exactly. people who like see like Bean Mouth and think like, Ugh. oh my god, animation is literally dead. Like, you guys don't do any... you. Like, none of you motherfuckers draw, and you're saying, like, oh, this is where it's, it died. It's so, yeah, it's so, God, it's, I feel like we have, this, this argument comes up every couple of months, and it's so, yeah. it's exhausting, it's so dumb, mm. it's. <laughs> Not just B-Mail, even, like, almost every talking point animation Twitter, whether yeah. it's, like, someone who's, like, an actual fan, or someone who just, like, fucking hates everything, oh they keep recycling this shit. How many fucking posts are you gonna make about turning red, or how, turning how it's red. getting cancelled, or something about Infinity Train, blah, blah, uh. blah, 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 and I know, people are gonna, like, be surprised, like, don't you, like, talk about cartoons? Aren't you, like, a cartoon review or whatever? Why do you yeah. hate it? I hate it more than people realize, because this is the <laughs> shit that I could see 20 Four seven. When I found the like, cuphead obnoxious. shit, oh my god, I wanted to blow my yeah. fucking head out. It's just so. It, it's, uh, I, I, I need to get off down my chest. Oh what did god. I see on Twitter? I saw like somebody seen <laughs> saying something about the turning red characters, and it's like this isn't how girls, uh, how teenage girls like uh, act. And it's like I, I guarantee you, the people making turning red probably have like children and like more positive like. Uh, childhood experiences than you do, guy who probably got, like, shouldn't touched be by, like, like near fucking yeah. girls. I'm just yeah, saying. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Like a guy who probably got like touched on the shoulder once in high school and is still like <laughs> that's like that's like his his dying candlelight. That's like the one thing that's ever it, happened. It, <laughs> it, it, yeah, it's so it. Some people just love to tell on themselves so yeah. much. You know? yeah, it's, it's, so kind, true. it's kind of like when like Ben Shapiro is kind of like, um, actually, pussies don't get wet, and it's so yeah. like, wait, wait a second, bro, <laughs> hold up, <laughs> hold up. You, you just fucking just hold on yourself. You just mm. said the most like, um, yeah. first of all, girls don't look like this at all. Second, he does it in so- like the most like in the smallest of ways too. Like it'll be like. I have this magnificent piece of wood from uh, Home Depot. Like, nobody goes to Home Depot to get a single fucking plank of two by four, you fucking noob. (laughs) (laughs) Like, you fucking (laughs) narper. Like, this guy, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, he's never even held a hammer. (laughs) I would like one wood, please. I would like one wood, please. But uh, back to the edit. <laughs> <laughs> he turned into a beaver right, right in front of your eyes. It's funny shit I ever seen. <laughs> but um, me 
uh, back to the animation like yeah. Twitter topic. Um, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not like a, I'm not like a YouTube animator talk guy, whatever you want to call him. I'm, I'm not mm. I'm not a Pan Pizza clone like everybody else out here. But thank God. <laughs> but um, but me me and Cash are in a very um very unique group of people who have like defended things that like are like in the majority seems like people don't like. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because. Yeah, the amber thing right yeah yeah because I've, I've done a video like defending amber and uh cash over here has done a video um talking about how much they like uh magical girl friendship squad yeah and i actually did just finish watching that video yo we thank wa- you <laughs> uh, i think me and spork watched that it wasn't honestly that yeah, bad we, like it wasn't i it, i'd say it got better each episode yeah yeah, yeah exactly right and it's like it's like not like the worst thing ever People really, just hate but, women making jokes. I think that's the yeah. It's, yeah, that's what yes, it is. women this, and gay um, people making jokes. Yeah, or there's, anything. There's this there's this angle that I could have hit on my Amber video, but I knew if I brought it up, people would have like been way more mad at me. <laughs> oh, but man. like, people have this expectation about women, and they bring that over to like animated women as well, <laughs> right? Yeah. Because because like you you know about the whole like oh um like. Oh, girls just mature faster than boys. Well, it's just really that that's just like an expectation put on girls. On right? like literally like anybody. Like I should be the clown and you're the one who has to like shape up. But I get right. to be like the lovable man child or whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like the boy is always like, oh, bro, I'm just, you know, I'm just a little guy. I'm just a little guy. You know, I'm oh, just man. around. I'm just a little guy. That's like every like boy trope. And then. Yeah. The girl is kind of like, oh, you guys, oh, we're going to get in trouble, you guys. Oh, it's oh, like stuff guys. like that. Yeah. <laughs> right? But, right, and when, like, a girl character does, like, an immature thing, like, yeah. oh, man, people really want, like, the death of this character. Yeah. Or, like, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's unironically, like, um, there's this one meme that I saw where it's like, uh, you guys ever seen uh, Captain America, Win- uh, Winter, um, I mean, Captain America Civil War? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like yeah. the third Captain America movie. So at the end of the movie, um, it's revealed. Uh, spoilers, I guess. But at the end of the movie, it's revealed that um, the Winter Soldier killed like uh, Tony Stark's parents, and the Winter Soldier was like mind control during this whole time, right? Uh-huh. And that like that gets Tony Stark so mad, he tries to kill the Winter Soldier and Captain America, and um, and th- and there's this one meme where someone is like, after Captain, after Tony Stark finds out the Winter Soldier uh, did that, um, Tony Stark is all like. Uh, it's okay, Bucky. I know you were under my control. I'm totally not going to try to kill you right now. <laughs> and it's like, it's it's like people unironically kind of expect that out of like women characters. They want them mm. to be like completely like rational, like mm. logical all the fucking time. Like they they can't get that like the things yeah. people could do, the things that people could do, they could just handle them for so long until they get upset, you know, yeah. and seem quote unquote yeah. irrational. And like so many guys are like irrational too, but they don't. Yeah. They don't realize that they just they convince themselves that their anger is like logical yeah, yeah. right like oh i'm logically angry i'm like women who are irrationally angry yeah. you know the, the thing um, is like women are just objectified so it's like yeah if you're just malfunctional like any bit i just get to like say you're trash and find good new pussy or whatever <laughs> yeah exactly it's fucking yeah. it's it's not it's not um it's not based it's not at based. all it's anti-based based. The, yeah, the main character in your podcast is pro is pro woman. Pro yeah, woman. The, the ultimate main characters. Us. The ultimate marginalized main characters. <laughs> I'm with her. I'm with her. <laughs> it was her she's the, turn. She's she's coming back, boys. She's coming she's back, coming back. Ams. She's coming she's, back. She's most importantly of all. Hillary <laughs> 2024. Hillary 2028. Hillary 2020, 2020, 2020. Hillary yeah. forever. I hope Hillary becomes a monarch. Oh, oh fuck. But, but here's <laughs> the thing. So hard, dude. You know, oh, wait, just, yeah. Yeah, what were you saying, Cash? Yeah, 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 just to interject about, like, female characters. Uh, you know, I don't know if it's going to show up on, like, a video or whatever, but, like, for reference, my icon um, is Daisy from Magical Friendship Squad, which I've talked to a lot of people about the show who were able to, have, like, actually formulate their thoughts and just didn't hate women and gay people uh Mm -hmm. and for a lot of people um dates was their least favorite character because you know like entitled irresponsible lazy whatever but Mm. honestly um i really don't think that you know if you have these traits like 
in a male character, not not even just like a main character, just like a male character in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, totally. you, people you, don't really you care. You kind of you kind of just described like Johnny Test. I'm mean, like, <laughs> really, yeah. Really? Every like kind of like boy character is kind of like irresponsible, but that's like that's just how that's where the drama yeah. comes from. You know, it's like. It's like they see like a, a character, a, a boy character, be irresponsible, and they mm. think, "Oh yeah, this makes sense because you know." This makes sense. He's come. just he's just a wacky guy, you know. This he's just, just a guy. He's just a goofy guy. He's just a silly boy, and that's unironically mm. like the way I hear people describe Mark yeah. and Invincible. He's like, "Oh, you know, he's just a silly guy. You know, he's, he's just, just a mistakes. guy. You know, he's, he's just he's, a guy. He didn't do right? anything wrong." Oh uh, yeah, but when like a like a girl is like that, it's like, mm. "Oh man, she's like." Oh, she's evil. She's she's evil. Actually, she's completely she's evil. evil. I can't believe. Yeah, fucking. She's gaslighting. She's gaslighting fucking him. <laughs> fucking she, gutter slut. Honestly, you know. Right. Like, exactly. How dare you? How dare you not be upfront and honest with me twenty four seven? It's like, it's um. I, I think it's been a blessing and a curse that the word gaslight has become like more relevant, more like popular. Because <laughs> yeah. like because like now now we're being aware of like abuse and like terms like gaslight, but now it's like oh gaslighting is just lying, and it's like yeah. no, it's it's not. It's not just lying. Yeah, it's I know. Not. Like I'm less familiar with the word now, honestly, because of it's more prevalent. Because like you know, like two birds of time. When you see it on your Twitter timeline, it's just you know exaggerate or you know yeah mm -hmm. so it's People like being facetious yeah, yeah exactly so like if i have been gaslit you know like there's like a two for a chance i'm like eh, maybe they were playing a plank like playing a prank <laughs> like i don't know maybe it was april fools you know so, yeah, you, 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 you hear it you hear it here first folks uh cash very easy to gaslight yeah. <laughs> you heard it here first they admitted yeah. it they said it right now i'm not disagreeing <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh man so Oh, okay, uh, so let's see how we're doing on the clock. Okay, so if I think we all said everyone we wanted to cancel, right? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, Vladimir Putin, uh, people who think podcasts are like uh, high art and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, animation, animation Twitter, Twitter right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that the, before was lost. the three. The three like uh, evils of our world, really, like the, ev the most evilest things happening right yeah, if now. If you if you turn the the Christian cross upside down, they're the negative versions of the Christian, <laughs> right. Christian exactly Christ. the Antichrist of the world, <laughs> if you will. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, is there any like uh, final things? Anything you guys want to show before uh, we end this episode? Uh, just uh, people of the world. Uh, come together, share a coke. You know, uh, follow my Twitter. Oh wait, you remind me. I just, I just saw that. Tell me if you've seen that video of the white lady who's like, "Oh, if I was Vladimir Putin's mom, I would have fixed him." Oh <laughs> yeah, that was uh, all over my timeline. White women it's, do be saying that I could fix it, him. <laughs> it's like the it's like the evolved form. Yes, it's the evolved yeah. form of instead of saying like if I dated him I could fix him. It's more like if if hypothetically I was his mother if I gave birth to him I could fix yeah. him. Freud's having a fucking field day over here. Oh man, um, Freud is fucking like spinning in his grave generating massive electricity right imagine now. you have like a nightmare and you have like a nightmare you're like breastfeeding your baby and you look down and it's vladimir putin's head oh my god that, that that sounds like a it sounds like a bit from like a scary movie from a, one of those parody movies you know? oh yeah, 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 yeah that yeah, sounds yeah. like something they would do as like a joke yeah oh my god uh, wow, that's but, my caliber of humor. Scary. Okay, but 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 now like, <laughs> okay guys, but actually now show show your stuff right now. All right. Yeah, just uh, go to my Twitter. It's Kazuchu. It should be in the description below. It should be like um. It should be on the screen actually right now. Oh, yeah, that too. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Cash, you go ahead. All right. Uh, this can be doozy. Um, I will cut it short. Um, if you want to follow me on Twitter, um just uh cash cash k-a-s-h c-a-s-h -S -H. uh you just like type that in um i have my art account and my podcast account uh in my bio if you want to listen to my own podcast um it is the cash cast k-a-s-h-c-e-s-t uh we were talking about uh magical friendship squad earlier and i will say um, the next two episodes are going to be with people who worked on that show. So if you're at all interested, uh, oh, you know, epic. yeah, just keep Ooh. just keep in mind. Uh, and if you donate to my coffee, um, you'll get early access to episodes as soon as they come out. For everyone else, I'm gonna try to drop one a month. Epic. 
that's enticing. Does it sound like a deal? That sounds like a deal there, audience. Yeah, that that's like a, you yeah. Want to, you want to I mean, yeah. On. Yeah, I don't have tears yet. So like, if you don't, if you don't like any amount, you get like, the same benefit. Mm-hmm. So like, think about <laughs> it. <laughs> think about right, it. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Epic. Yeah. All right, guys. So that's that's the end of uh, main character syndrome. Um, oh. We'll see I'm glad you. It's this is gonna be it's gonna be biweekly. This is a biweekly podcast, by the way. Oh, I could never. <laughs> All right, <laughs> All right, guys. All right, all right, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.